said that you don't travel any um, to special assignments. Um, does your family, does he have talked to that you guys go to? Well, you know, I've talked to them to a couple of these trips, not too many. Um, he was with me in Tanzania and Kenya because we were we were, we, were, we were told by our government that we should not go there. We were there within 10 days. <laughs> it was pretty scary. And plus, I was only going with one photographer. So, uh, so we became a team. But little did we know, we had our own CIA agents. So we were pretty safe. Though. They were always. You know, you think for a group of well-educated folks that have been working this out a while ago, a journalist said it's going to be really great because I started out there so which is why I love doing the show with the channel. But finally, there's going to be a high-level seminar to talk about what's next after the news. I don't know. I know what we have now is not, I hope it's not enough. But, I think people have wanted so much for the past to return and newspapers to get hearty and healthy again that they kept hoping they could do something when capitalism arrives. And it always has. For me, I think that's what it's about. Uh, so they are hoping that by starting to really study what are the ways we can communicate with uh, other than blogs that are unchecked and unsourced, uh, that our country deserves better. I don't know what will come of that, but I know um, several foundations now finding been giving money all the time to start up, to do little startups that we have a couple of things around here. You know, the New York Times, Sports Bay Citizen, and some other things and around the country, you'll find that. But we're just now trying to come up with a new model. Plus, if you're the writer of books, um, everything is going digital. Authors, except the big name people who get big advances, do not make money from writing books. And now they become very honest to tell you, if you think you're going to make money from this book, don't do it. That cannot be a motivating factor, unless you're coming in with a big reputation and somebody who's going to be Advance. And the story behind the big advance is so rough and you're almost ashamed of that because it's just really sort of a money laundering machine now. You get a politician or some special person who's done something, they don't really write the book, but they get the advance money and that's how they get paid. And then the book gets out and then you get large associations who will buy the books by the thousands and send them up to the bestseller list. So it's, it's not right out there. <laughs> but there are people, you know, like me, who just uh, who didn't listen and went ahead and uh, found a small press here locally and took me on as a client. And we've done all right. You know, we, we, we haven't made anybody's bestseller list. But I'll tell you, for the library people here, the very first review of my book came from the Library Association. Its first recommendation to read, and with other libraries joining in uh, affirming the book as something that might be helpful to uh, teens and young people, have been what has saved it. And we've sold enough books to go into paperback, which was always uh, my aim, because hardcovers, uh, you know, you get down to fifteen dollars, the kids can buy the book, or so that was my goal, and I did that. I sell well over 10,000 books, and, and uh, did that last year or so. And then I'll maybe try to get out on the road really, really sell books. <laughs> it's very true, and uh, you know, the math is off when it comes to what you pay for something on the internet. You do have to lay out all that other stuff for print. But, it's very hard to tell people that they have to take responsibility for what they want. They can't sit on the sidelines. It's like the election. You can't stay home and then right the day after. Uh, I think that as Americans, 
you know, that hunger that we have for new discoveries and for doing new things and moving ahead. It's sort of been squashed a bit. And I'm hoping that we can learn the lesson from whatever went on out there. That involvement of you, the citizen, is the only thing. Birdfield and Oxford used to say that. The people who need the most help are the ones who are least interested in voting. But this time, they found their footing. And so we'll see what happens. How do you compare this election to the past elections that you've covered? Oh my goodness, that's been all over the map because I've covered you know, both party conventions. Um, this election was meaner than most. This election was influenced by more money than in any of the history of our country. And every reporter will tell you when you see the exchange of money to the degree that we had it, um, you don't know what to have confidence in. You don't know which stories are the ones that are really solid or if they're the ones that have bought the path of the and so it keeps you on the edge uh, really bad. You know, I told you about uh, uh, going to uh, Tampa to the convention. Not only did we have you know, I told you no idea. So I followed these guys around me actually in the snow. And that was something that they bought in the storm from the floor. <laughs> Just to see, I used to tell So I, and I really, by now, I was friends with people. But, um, we almost made peace. Some of you may have heard this. I was on the floor of the convention. There was a, a woman, a black woman from CNN. You heard this story? Black woman photographer from CNN, just down the way from me. And just like in the beginning, it's those people up there in the galleries. A couple of guys in the galleries yelled out the N word at him and then threw peanuts at him. It said, that's the way we feed animals now. Mm -hmm. Now, I must say, the party kicked the whole out. Okay. So that was good. That's the progress. But the fact is, there are those same people who are up there in the gallery where I was, down here in Florida, not knowing any better than to do stupid stuff. And it only you know, made an embarrassment for the party. I must say that the leadership is very unhappy. What happened because on the East Coast anyway it made all of the papers. So that was not good. So some things changed, but at least there was something of a silver lining. Yeah. Um, thank you. A lot has been said about how the media has become less and less impartial in, in its reporting. Um, as a long-term journalist, how important do you think it is for the media to remain impartial? Oh God, it's, I mean, it's no media for the people if it's not impartial. Which is why we have this, well at least I guess it's balancing on. You know, we had Fox <laughs> with its erroneous label of what they were. And finally MSNBC just came out and says we're going to be the liberal counterpart. So we know when we listen to those channels what we're getting and that's fine if you know this is a slanted view operation then you you digest that information that way but it's when it seeps into what uh, operations that claim to be balanced and fair that causes the trouble and that was one of the things that i don't think the republican party realized how damaging it was to everything they did thereafter. And they said they were not going to be concerned about truth. And so now you don't know when I'm giving a press release, should I be concerned about truth or not? See, it's, it's the doubt that's in your mind that is troublesome. But um, even at this point, that this being over, to be some decisions that are made by voters, you know, I don't know whether we're going to be able to bounce back the way we should. Although I am so encouraged by the first couple of days of talks, you know, about the clip. And that's the best we have heard the first time in four years that a Republican leader says that they're willing to talk about that. 
that is that's why I hang in there. <laughs> no, I, I, I think we deserve a fair and balanced view. Okay, thank you all again. Blue Island Sky